Today in this video we will be discussing about the action mechanism of antibiotics. Where we will see how these antibiotics are able to eliminate the bacterial pathogen. First of all, let's see the basic overview of action mechanism of antibiotics. The antibiotics work at three levels. The first level is at gene expression level of bacteria. The gene expression of bacteria is three step process where we see the flow of information from DNA to RNA to protein. We see that DNA transports its information into mRNA molecule through a process called transcription. And from the information of mRNA molecule, the bacteria produce a protein in the process called translation. When both of the processes, that is transcription and translation, are stopped by antibiotics, the cell ceases to exist. Not only these two are halted by antibiotics, but also the DNA replication of bacteria is halted by some antibiotics also. Another novel way of working of antibiotics is that they inhibit the cell wall synthesis of bacteria, which we are going to discuss later on in detail, how they inhibit the cell wall synthesis of bacteria. We humans do not have cell wall like bacteria have. So the cell wall becomes easy target of antibiotics. And finally, there are some antibiotics like sulfa antibiotics that inhibit the folate synthesis in bacteria by competitive inhibition of enzymes. Now let's see in detail the action mechanism of antibiotics in the different processes. The first process we are going to discuss is the inhibition of transcription process. How the antibiotic inhibits the transcription process of bacteria to halt their action. We know is the information from DNA that is getting transported to the RNA molecule by the process of transcription. And in this process of transcription it is the RNA polymerase enzyme that catalyzes the synthesis of mRNA molecule. And we know this RNA polymerase consists of four subunits, two alpha units and two beta units. Basically there is another subunit that makes the RNA polymerase hollow enzyme, which is sigma factor. This sigma factor is only for transcription initiation purposes. After it initiates the transcription, it dissociates again. So in this case, the antibiotics inactivate the beta subunits and renders the enzyme non-functional. So in this way, transcription is halted by antibiotics. Rifampicin is one of the mostly used antibiotics that have the ability to halt the transcription in bacteria. Mostly this antibiotic rifampicin targets the mycobacterium and Staphylococcus aureus. Another working mechanism of antibiotics is to inhibit the translation in bacteria. First we see in the translation process, the information from mRNA is transcribed into a protein molecule. And this translation occurs in ribosome, where this mRNA is able to make polypeptide chains. We all know the ribosome of bacteria is 70S and it consists of two subunits. One is large unit that is 50S and other being the smaller unit that is 30S. And during the protein synthesis, that is the translation, the mRNA chain embeds itself in the ribosome between two subunits like this as shown in the figure. And then the charged tRNA starts to make the polypeptide chains by incorporating amino acids by taking the codon information from mRNA chain. So this is how the translation process kicks in. But see, the translation process is very sensitive. If any deformation occurs within the translational assembly, the protein synthesis will stop. The protein synthesis depends on the conformation of ribosome subunits too because the charged tRNA has anticodons while as the mRNA has codons. So translational process matches both of these and then, in, and then incorporates amino acids according to the codon on mRNA. So if there is any misreading of codons by charged tRNA anticodons, there will be termination in protein synthesis. So in that case, the antibiotics targets both the ribosomal units, thereby affecting the translational machinery and finally terminating it. Some antibiotics also target the mRNA chain to deform it, then terminating the protein synthesis also. The antibiotics like clindamycin, chloramphenicol targets the bacterial 50S unit and 30S subunits are target of tetracycline antibiotics. So this is how the inhibition of translation is achieved by these antibiotics. Then there is inhibition of cell wall synthesis by antibiotics and it mostly occurs in gram positive to bacteria because the antibiotics target here peptidoglycan layer and this peptidoglycan layer is mostly present in gram positive to bacteria 
in large quantity whereas it's present in gram negative bacteria 5 to 10 percent and that too on the inner side whereas in case of gram positive bacteria it's present on the outer side of cell wall that's why it mostly occurs in gram positive bacteria and in its making there is a cross-linking of linear peptide glycon chains and when there is a cross-linking of linear peptide glycon chains the peptide glycon layer is made finally and here in this process the antibiotics inhibit the cross-linking of linear polypeptide chains thereby the peptide glycon layer is not made when the peptide glycon layer is not made the cell death occurs the antibiotics which cause inhibition of cell wall synthesis include a group of antibiotics called penicillins that include amoxicillin, beta-lactam antibiotics and many others. This is how the antibiotics work in our body to eliminate the pathogens that are causing the disease. You can support the Hussein Biology on Patreon also by going to the Hussein Biology page. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.